All right, folks, thanks for joining in here today. Good morning. All right, looks like we've got a good number of attendees racking up today. Excellent. All right, folks, well, this is going to be getting started with Top Producer X. Uh, CRM. And so this is very much a show aimed at brand new Top Producer X users. We're going to go through some main setup points and uh, make sure uh, that you know what the essentials are uh, for getting started with TPX. That being said, if you're an existing Top Producer 8i user uh, that wants to learn more about upgrading uh, to the new Top Producer X, just check out the chat. I, I posted something just a moment ago uh, about the other webinar we have, which is upgrading from 8i uh, Classic to Top Producer X. Um, so we have the latest recording available over there for you. Also have the registration link uh, for the 25th, uh, if that's what you're interested in. So just check out the chat. I posted that there about two minutes ago already. Um, but yeah, it, but if you're a new Top Producer X user, uh, or maybe you're a Top Producer AI user that just wants to make sure your TPX is all ready to go, um, this is uh, the one for you. And uh, yeah, Dan, it's it's all good. Yeah, it just probably doesn't show the chat history for you. Sounds good. Um, all right, folks. So my name's Spencer with uh, Top Producer's Customer Success Team, um, and I'm joined by Dan Salcedo today, uh, as per usual. And... Um, you know, guys, if you want to reach out at any point during the show, please feel free to do so. We'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, just use the chat button at the bottom of Zoom. And that's going to let you interact with us today. Um, but uh, that being said, going to make sure that we get through this in a timely manner. Make sure that uh, you um, have a good understanding of all the essentials of getting started uh, with TPX. And we'll point you in the right direction to learn more after as well. Uh, this isn't your only chance to learn about Top Producer X. We have lots of other content available, uh, including other webinars, quick start videos, and much, much more. And, and our customer care team is just available uh, Monday to Friday uh, from 7.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so that would be 10.30 till 7 for our Eastern Standard Time folks. I know there's a lot of you, so <laughs> I always like to mention. Um, so you can use that live chat. It's available in the bottom right of any top producer product. Uh, it's also available at topproducer.com slash campus. Um, so for any new users watching, uh, just wanted to let you know that that is our main support site, topproducer.com slash campus. Uh, we always recommend that that should be your first stop because uh, there's tons of resources on there. Um, you know, if you just want to answer to a question or learn a little bit more about a feature, uh, just try typing it in the search bar and chances are there's an article about that. But if there isn't, you can always reach out to our live chat and get some further help. Um, so folks, the game plan for today is we're going to be going over getting you logged in for the very first time. Uh, if you're a new top producer user, um, we of course want to make sure that you can get logged into your brand new CRM. Uh, so we're going to show you a quick demonstration of what getting logged in for the first time would look like, as well as a little demonstration of what that sort of welcome email would look like in your inbox uh, when you first sign up. Um, we'll also talk about some of the basics of your sales pipeline. Um, so what you should know right off the bat in terms of tagging your contacts and categorizing your contacts uh, so that you kind of, you know, set, set yourself up for success in the future um, and uh, create some structure in, in your database and in your real estate business in general. Um, and then we'll go through some key setup points for TPX. Uh, we'll talk about email integration, calendar synchronization, all that kind of good stuff. MLS connectivity, make sure that uh, you really customize the CRM to yourself so that you can then utilize all its features day to day. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about the follow coach, uh, which is a great feature that any top producer user can use day in and day out whenever you want um, to uh, focus on five contacts at a time for follow up, for cleanup, for prospecting, uh, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, yeah. Um, so heading right into our first point for today, uh, like I said, for any new users watching, uh, of course, want to make sure you can get logged in successfully if you haven't yet. Um, if you're an existing top producer user, um, you can always just click that TPX button that's across the top menu bar of the 8i version, and that's just going to log you right in. You don't have to type in your username or password again. Um, but if you're a brand new user, um, you do want to check your inbox for an email uh, called activate your new top producer account. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. Um, so yeah, activate your new top producer account. Uh, your login credentials should be located roughly in the middle of that email there. Just please note there, there is uh, usually a, a dot or period in between the, the username there. Um, so if you are noting that down manually, you'll just want to be aware of that. Otherwise, feel free to just even copy and paste that over to the login screen uh, that you'll see when you click on Get Started. Uh, you can also just go to crm.topproducer.com 
Uh, Dan can get you a link in the chat there. Um, if you want to change your password, you can use the forgot password feature anytime. Um, so let's just sign in and see what that looks like. Um, all right, so when you first log into any top producer product, uh, it's going to kind of give you a reminder of the subscriber agreement. I, I say reminder because this is just the standard terms and conditions for all top producer subscriptions. Uh, you, you can find the same thing in your order confirmation email. You can find it publicly available online on our website at the login screen. It's also discussed at the point of sale. And um, so if you need a reminder that it's right here for you, you do have to confirm that one last time uh, before um, clicking next. Uh, if you like the short version of what that entails, uh, all top producer products do have a one-year term commitment. Uh, you do have the first 30 days, however, to just uh, evaluate that and make sure it's a good fit for you and your business. Um, but that being said, we have lots of help for you every step of the way to make sure that you are comfortable uh, and making that a part of your business going into that second month. So guys, live chat, webinar is like the one you're watching right now. We have lots of different support options to make sure that it's going to uh, be something that you can utilize day in and day out. Um, so after kind of re-acknowledging the subscriber agreement there, we're just going to go ahead and click on next. And then on the next screen, we're going to be brought to the first time setup page. Um, this is very much just your CRM's profile for you. Uh, it's going to pull information from here from time to time for certain uh, features, uh, especially market snapshots. So if you're a market snapshot subscriber, uh, in addition to just the CRM, um, it's going to pull information from here for your branding. So uh, it is you know, definitely important to fill this out sooner than later if you're a market snapshot user. That being said, guys, you can always come back here later. There, there's no huge rush to fill this out all at once. I do recommend just setting the time zone at the bottom at least. Uh, just make sure that's accurate and then save my info. We'll show you how to come, how to come back here anytime. Uh, awesome. So it's going to welcome you to TPX. It's going to ask you about contacts. Um, you know, there, of course, you can import contacts from... Uh, like a CSV spreadsheet file that you might have coming from a different system, maybe something you've put together yourself. Um, you know, importing contacts is kind of a whole conversation in its own right. Everyone's situation is different. We will kind of touch on that a little bit more later on. Uh, but for now, we're going to go through adding a singular contact because it's actually going to give us a, a good opportunity to talk about some really key uh, points of the system anyway. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to learn more about importing contacts, just stay tuned. And we also have a quick start video uh, that can help you out with that. And like I said, everyone's contact situation is unique. Uh, our live chat would be a great option to kind of walk you through your, your needs um, for that as well. Um, all right. So when we go ahead and click on add contact, it's going to take us to this screen that looks like this. And this is where we can add our very first contact. Uh, it's a great opportunity, like I said, to learn about the system as well and, you know, utilize it right away. If you have someone that you're working with right now, feel free to go ahead and add them. You know, that that buyer that you're you're working with to help find their their first home, maybe, or that seller that's listed with you. Um, anyone that you're working with would be a great example to learn. You can add a past client you just closed with. Um, we're going to pull random name out of the hat as per usual. Um, and just a little disclaimer, guys, here, any names you see here today just fictional, any, <laughs> um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, any coincidences are, are just that, you know, they're just coincidences in terms of names or anything. So um, we're going to go ahead and let's see. How about, I want a K name. I don't know why. Um, any idea, Dan? Um, Katie. Katie. All right. So let's say Katie Smith, just as generic as you can get. YouTube, don't come at us for copyright <laughs> infringement. Um, so let's say Katie Smith here is, um, let's say, I try to switch up the examples from time to time, but um, I don't know. Let's just say she, she's a, a first time home buyer, okay? And so um, Katie's come to us, uh, maybe by referral, let's say, uh, maybe one of our uh, best past clients that has uh, bought and sold with us over the past 15 years referred Katie to us, right? Um, and you can really make use of TPX to, to harvest those repeat and referral opportunities, by the way. Um, but uh, Katie Smith, so let's say we want to enter as much information as we have for her, uh, at least initially. So you can add as many phone numbers or email addresses as you need to, as you can see here. Um, we're going to go ahead and add her address if we wanted to here. So let's just say, just for time's sake, 123 Main Street, uh, Vancouver. Um, it totally exists, I promise. Um, and then 
British Columbia. I can't think of a real zip code right now. Um, V3W1T6. There we go. I just kind of made one up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So let's say Katie is a first-time home buyer. She's come to us. She's not really sure if she's qualified. She's not really sure how it all works, um, you know, in terms of the financial aspect of it, a credit aspect, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, she's we, we just started following up with her recently to see how we can help. Uh, what we're going to do is set her to the status of engage uh, until we can really qualify her one way or another. Because like I said, maybe we've just spoken once or twice so far. Uh, hasn't really gotten too serious yet. So, um, so contact status, guys. You know, this is kind of the baseline of how you can organize your contacts in TPX. Um, there's five main contact statuses in the system. And uh, they're really just the backbone of how your database is structured. And so if we go from left to right here, you know, first off, we have new, should be contacted right away, brand new leads, people that have just made a new inquiry online, people you've never spoken with before, essentially. Um, And then you'd want to move them over to engage uh, as soon as possible after following up with them. Uh, You know, whether that was something you did personally, or whether maybe that was something that your lead response plan did, uh, that's included in TPX. and then, like I said, from Engage, um, getting to know them, their business needs, their time frame, all that kind of stuff, and then trying to figure out whether they're actually a, a good prospect right now or not. So if they're kind of on the colder side of uh, being a lead, you can switch them over to future, signifying a long-term opportunity, or to active, actively working on an opportunity. Uh, basically, they would stay inactive for as long as necessary until you have closed that transaction with them. Um, if something falls through, maybe something unfortunately it goes terribly wrong and they have a complete change of heart, <laughs> you know, you, you could definitely move them back to, to future if you needed to out of active, but usually in most cases, it would kind of go from left to right. Um, and uh, to close, hopefully as many as possible to close, obviously. Um, you do have inactive and non-client just in case, um, you know, especially for other realtors you work with, uh, vendors you work with, um, that kind of thing. Uh, always recommended to set those to non-client, keep them out of the way of your sales pipeline. Uh, but they're still part of your business. They're still part of your database. So they definitely have a spot there. And uh, Deb? Yeah, uh, we have a lot of uh, new attendees today. So uh, we I just want to reiterate the contact status field. That is one of the fundamental features that you're going to want to make sure you're using uh, always. Basically, it's going to help you understand um, your hundreds of contacts, maybe thousands of contacts. Uh, it'll help you understand how you should prioritize who you should talk to next, right? How ready are they to get into the market, right? So you're gonna you're gonna go from maybe those future leads, the colder leads. Those ones are probably gonna be on the lower end of it, right? And then the newer one, obviously, because you that's a brand new lead, you want to talk to them right away. That's probably your most urgent priority. Uh, and engage is like your your people that are your, you're still qualifying, right? You're just trying to figure out whether they're gonna be hot or cold leads. So. Definitely that contact status, if there's anything that you can take as a basic um, uh, learning item from this show, is that use the contact status to your full advantage, and that will help you kind of prioritize your time to see who you should talk to next. Yeah, exactly. And then in combination with your statuses, guys, contact types are really, really important. They're going to let you tag your contacts in more specific ways. As you can see, I've got a bunch of examples on there just now. Very, very easy. I just type them in the box here and then search them uh, and added them if I already have them in my database. If I don't have them in my database, you know, I can just make it on the fly here and just make that a label that I want to use going forward for my contacts. I'm going to be able to, at a glance, know exactly what this person is about, what their needs are, um, search for any of these individual ones. So if I want to pull up a list of all my referrals, I can, right? If I want to pull up a list of all my first time buyers and maybe send them a really specific set of marketing material or something. I could do that. Um, and uh, yeah, we yeah, do have a question um, in the chat as well. Yeah, I'll read it out. Mm. Um, Carl, thanks Carl for attending. Uh, Carl says, how can I add or modify these contact fields? I'm working on a drip campaign for expireds and want to have the MLS number. How can I do that? If I put in notes, how do I search for that? So, so Carl, um, the fields that you see here in the contact record, these, these can't be modified. Um, you can use them in different ways though, but it sounds like, um, you know, if you have expireds, um, you, you might've, um, like you might want to create a transaction record for that and then kind of keep that historical record of that expired there. 
um, including its MLS number. Um, so then that way you could focus on that one. Um, if you put it in the notes section, um, that's not really something that is searchable directly per se. Um, you could pull up your overall notes section in TPX though, and use your web browsers control F function and do a search that might work for you. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a different way that we could approach this though. Um, so Carl, feel free to elaborate a little bit, or even feel free to use the live chat in the bottom right corner of TPX and we can get you some more help. Uh, I feel like there's, there's gotta be a good way to, to accomplish what you're looking for. Um, got another question from Alexis. If we import our contacts, is there a way to select all active clients and group them as active all at once? Or do we have to do this contact by contact? Um, yep, absolutely. We can definitely get that mass updated for you, Alexis. Uh, feel free to reach out to us through the live chat. Just let us know what you're looking to do and we can go ahead and help you out with that. Um, so if you have your contacts tagged like that, uh, that's perfect. Cause yeah, we would just say all active clients that are tagged that way, move them to the active status. Uh, and then, yeah, you don't have to do that one by one. Just let us know, Alexis. Yeah. You can do it during the import or after the import. Mm -hmm. so, um, it'll be at the top of the import screen when you're do doing it, when you're doing the import process. Yeah. I usually recommend that. Um, like if you just have your general database, it has a mix mash of everyone, like active clients, past clients, uh, you know, other realtors, et cetera. I recommend just importing the whole thing into future. Um, and then using those contact types to then shift things around a little bit to organize right after importing. Cause you can only, you know, import into one status at a time, uh, but thankfully it's really easy to do. Uh, just feel free to reach out to the live chat bottom right corner of your TPX and we'll get you some help with that. Um, Denise was saying, wondering if you can send us a recording of this webinar. Uh, so Denise, our webinar recordings are automatically available on topproducer.com slash campus. Um, just go to the support site, um, hover over the little webinar schedule sort of menu at the top, and you'll see getting started previously recorded in brackets. And then uh, also the after setting up show, the, the follow up show to this one previously recorded is available there as well. So the two main shows always available automatically uh, afterwards. Yeah, you can also go to YouTube. Uh, youtube.com slash top producer software. We also have all of our recordings there automatically. So no, no need to really send out the, the recording to anyone. It's just, just publicly available. Um, Carl was asking, can you please walk through the importing contacts? How do I include the contact type contact status and the campaign name? I want to apply to these important contacts. Um, so yeah, Carl, you can definitely include contact types, um, as a column in your spreadsheet. In fact, you can even include more than one type in the cell at the same time, just separate them with uh, commas. Um, so yeah, if you want to get a head start on that, you could definitely do that in your spreadsheet beforehand, or there are ways to do it once they're in the system. Um, so we do have a quick start video, Carl, for walking through importing contacts. I, I personally helped create that video about two years ago. Um, so Dan can link you to that uh, soon. And that would be a great starting point, kind of shows you a visual guide of how you sort of do some of that stuff. Uh, and then our live chat is available uh, for your more particular help, you know, one-on-one -on -one help there as well. Yeah, no, no problem, Denise. All right, folks. So we're going to go ahead and catch up a little bit here and save this contact. Um, quick overview of the contact record for you, for you guys. Uh, left side, we have the contacts, primary information, such as their uh, phone number, email address, contact types, that sort of thing. Um, down the middle of the record, we have the different areas that we can navigate to. So for example, um, we're on the dashboard page by default. We can just see a little bit of everything there, but maybe I wanna see the anniversaries for this person. Well, I can go to important dates and I can add an anniversary such as a birthday or, or that kind of thing. Um, if I wanna see all their properties, I can just go to the properties tab, make sure that's up to date as well. Um, and so, so on and so forth. Um, guys, if you wanna learn more about the different aspects of the contact record, there are these little question mark symbols sort of scattered around next to the names of things. So for example, if you wanna learn more about email history, just click on that. You're actually gonna be taken to a uh, article with a quick start video about setting up and using email integration um, with some examples of usage as well. If you scroll down, um, oh, okay, sorry, different article, but <laughs> there's also one for email signatures and pretty much everything else here as well. Um, if you need to edit a contact's information, you can just use that blue edit contact button at the bottom there. That's going to let you edit all that primary stuff that you, um, you know, added when they when you first created the contact, including contact types and contact status. So if you need to remove or add different types as you go, feel free to add or remove them here. 
and definitely should be modifying your contact types for a contact as you move them through the sales pipeline. So for example, if I move this engage lead to active later on, um, I probably want to, you know, and we go under contract and things like that. I probably want to tag them accordingly as buyer under contract and whatever else is applicable at that point. And also remove, you know, if if they if we close with them, pretty much want to remove all that current stuff and then kind of switch that over to past client, past buyer, all that kind of stuff so that I have that um, accurate, right? Um, yeah, and so Dan was also talking about relationships or Angelina had a question, Dan, what was that again? Yeah, Angelina asked, where do we add a contact's spouse to the contact? So in this example, Kate, Katie, mm -hmm. uh, where do we add Katie's husband to the contact? Yep, good, good question, Angelina. So uh, TPX actually has a brand new feature as of about a few weeks ago. Uh, called relationships. It's your dedicated area to keeping track of all the people that are related to a contact. So let's say Katie here is our main point of contact. You know, we've been dealing with Katie from day one um, of her lead inquiry. She also has a spouse. So let's say she, maybe she also has a child. Um, so we don't necessarily need to be emailing the spouse and child on every little thing, <laughs> especially the child, right? So, um, you know, this is where it comes in to allow you to sort of pick and choose who you are in communication with, who you're CCing on emails. Um, who, where you're kind of keeping the majority of your records, right? Because imagine how confusing it would get if you were trying to split the notes and all the stuff between two different records. Um, so relationships is here to kind of help make that easier. So if we click on the relationships tab at the top of the record here, and you can actually rearrange this any way that you want, um, and then click on add relationship. We can then search for the contact that's her spouse or create a new one on the fly. Uh, let's just say purely for example that I have um, her spouse already in the database, right? Let's say it's Kevin here. I just click on his name, set it to spouse, it's spouse by default, and then save relationship, just like that, the done. And that the, the, the two contacts are like now. Um, if I click on Kevin, it's just gonna jump me right to his record. And then I can just click right back. And then from here, I can also add you know, their child. Uh, let's just say their child's name is Tim, right? And it's gonna default to non-client so that this, relationship contact stays out of the way of your sales pipeline. You don't think you have like another leader or something like that, you know, save that contact and then say, this is the child save relationship. And you can just do this as many times as you need to in order to build this up and keep track of all the different relationships. Um, so ho hope that helps. Uh, that's how you do that. If I need to then email, um, you know, the spouses, it seems like something's wrong with my email integration at the moment, but, um, yeah, you'd be able to easily click on their names as suggestions uh, for including them on emails as well. Um, all right, then Mohammed, looks like Dan is going to be uh, taking care of you there with uh, your question on Edmonton. And uh, yeah, guys, so like I said, if you want to learn more about the contact record, just please uh, click on those question mark buttons. Also reach out through the live chat in the bottom right corner. We're going to give you more of a rundown one-on-one -on -one about what you want to learn about. Um, but guys, in terms of... Um, actually, sorry, just had a new question pop up in the chat there um, from uh, Jordan. And Jordan, thanks for joining in today. Uh, Jordan was asking, is every contact separate and we need to manually link them? Or can someone that is supposed to be on one contact? Um, so Jordan, as of the recent update, um, all contacts are separate now. Um, so if you are a current user, like an existing user before this update, there, there actually just be a button you click on that says convert to relationship. It's just a one-time thing. And then that contact will be split automatically, um, into the spouse, uh, like with, with a spouse tag, if they were on there before, and you, then you can modify that any way that you need to, in case that wasn't correct. Um, but yeah, in terms of adding new contacts, um, or sorry, in terms of linking contacts that are not in your database yet. Yeah, you would just make the primary contact, go to relationships, and then you can create the other contacts from there as well. Yeah, and to add to that, we did this because sometimes, you know, sometimes relationships don't work out, right? And they become spouse and ex-spouse, right? So having them separate into separate contact records allows you to market to one or both of them um, at the same time, right? So it's a bit more flexible in the long term, um, it, the, the way that it's built right now. Absolutely. And guys, one th important thing to keep in mind, especially for any brand new or sorry, for any existing users that are kind of 
um, you know, seeing this uh, transition from AI friends and family to relationships is that this is still a brand new feature, lots of room for evolution here. And so this is where we really need your feedback to make sure that uh, the feature keeps evolving in a way that makes sense for you guys. And so kind of good opportunity to bring up our feedback button in the bottom left corner here. Um, any top producer user can access the feedback button. If you want to uh, let us know what you'd like to see in the program, if you want to just go and browse existing requests and give them a thumbs up to add your support to that, you can definitely do that. Um, so guys, please check out the feedback button. If you want to help the evolution of TPX, we'd be happy to hear from you guys there. Um, all right, folks. So on to the second point for today, we're going to be talking about some of the, uh, foundational settings for top producer X. Uh, so things that really should be configured and customized uh, to you and your business and your email account and all that kind of stuff in order to get the most out of TPX. Um, so we're going to walk through some of the essentials. Um, not everything you see here today will pertain to everyone right off the bat, especially. And so, like I said, there's lots of ways to learn more about each individual feature setting later on. We're going to show you how to do that every step of the way. So um, before we do that, though, we do have a couple other questions here. Um, Judy was asking, will all the other contacts in the contact need to be re-added manually? Um, I guess I'm not sure what you mean, Judy, because previous to the update, there was only the primary and the secondary anyway. Uh, so there was really not a, another way to have a third or fourth or fifth contact for that. Um, if you're talking about, as Dan said, um, friends and family, uh, then then yeah, they they would have to be re-added. You could, you could technically even just have uh, 8i open in one window, TPX open in the other and then just kind of recreate that quickly uh, should take, you know, maybe a matter of a minute or two. Um, I would just recommend doing that as you come across the contacts, obviously don't, <laughs> you know, drive yourself crazy trying to find every single contact right off the bat to do that. Just as you come across them, um, you know, maybe just kind of do a little bit of cleanup as you go. Yeah, it's a uh, little bit of a pain, uh, but uh, especially if you're having to add each individual kid, for, for that person, right? Especially if they're younger. Uh, but the reason why we're doing this is one, before we did this, you weren't able to search for those family and friends, right? So we had a lot of feedback from customers saying, how come I can't find these contacts? Oh, you have to, you can only find them inside each individual contact in their family and friends tab in the older version of Top Producer. So this is one of those solutions that we found um, so that that part of it is easier. Right. Um, yes, it's going to be a bit tedious to do it, like re-adding them in right now. But hopefully, in the long run, you'll you'll see the benefits to it. Exactly. And then Alexis, um, absolutely, you're able to sort by tags. So there'd be almost no point to them if you <laughs> if you couldn't search for them. So absolutely, you can. You can click on them to search. You can search uh, in the search bar by typing the word "is" and then a colon. Um, you can also create custom tabs. Uh, in order to do that as well. So uh, yeah, keep, keep tagging your contacts with renter, buyer, seller, all that kind of good stuff because you can definitely search by them. Um, we can show you really quickly, but if you want to learn more about that, uh, we do have uh, our four things you want to know after you set up TPX webinar, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We do have database organization and management 101 coming up very soon. I think on the 21st, Dan, I might be wrong, but um yeah we do have lots of different ways to search for contacts uh contact type specifically i should say uh dan yeah uh, i do want to address the comment from angelina um she's saying that uh, the way the relationships is designed right now um it's not something um in her opinion doesn't work it's not something that would work um she doesn't like it um and it's not wonderful for the user experience there's no benefit uh sad face <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I totally get it, Angelina. Um, this is why this is brand new. Like this new feature relationship feature, feature is brand new. Why not both? Why can't we do both, right? In my opinion, why why can't we just give you both, right? Um, that's my own personal opinion. But that's why it's really important that we hear from you guys. This is this is why it's good that you're speaking up now. And you also want to hit that feedback button on the bottom left corner of Top Producer X especially if you're a top producer, 8i users, we use a lot of your feedback to make our new version top producer X built for you. Uh, so definitely hit that feedback button if you haven't already and let us know exactly all the, all the little details that you, you've seen from other competitors where you saw it didn't work and how we can make it better, right? But in the meantime, for now, um, 
If you're an existing AI user, yes, it's a little bit tedious that you're going to have to do it again in Top Producer X. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that it's good for everybody, especially new customers um, in, in the long run, right? Being that flexibility is what we're trying to achieve here um, so that, you know, in the long run, you can be more flexible when you're trying to follow up with your contacts. So I'm sorry about the, um, the inconvenience for now. Yeah, and guys, if you go to the feedback button in the bottom left corner, um, go ahead and, and click on the search bar once you're in the feedback system and just type in, um, it's uh, 80,000 is the number. Um, so if I put that in the chat there, like just like that 80,000, that'll bring you to the entry for relationships. Uh, just just so happens it's just number 80,000 coincidence. So nice and easy. Um, can, can you quickly show that, Spencer, uh, when, when you get a chance? Uh, to like go into the feedback and just it so everyone can see it quickly. may or may not work um the way okay. i have this set up yeah right now because i'm i'm on sort of a test account and i have my tpx in its own dedicated uh sort of like window here um so it, yeah it doesn't doesn't really like it when i try to hit that feedback button um but yeah normally if you were to do it from a regular account regular web browser and everything should work just fine uh let me just try to see what i can do here i'll just be a sec guys um, all right, so here's TPX in a normal window just to see. Yeah, there we go. So if I click on feedback from here, this is what it should look like. Um, you can see some of your priorities if you've been in here previously. It's going to show you the stuff that you've voted for. Uh, if you click in the, sorry, let me just adjust my window here. If you click in the search bar in the top right corner, you can type in either relationships or like I said, if you want, just type in 80,000. And that's going to take you to the relationships uh, entry here. It does say released. It does say closed. That doesn't stop you guys from adding comments here in the discussion area because uh, we're gathering more and more feedback after the launch of the feature. It's perfectly fine to add it here um, and we'll make sure that your guys' voice gets heard. I pass along a lot of this feedback myself uh, to our product team because uh, it's absolutely vital. We need to know that uh, what the next steps would be for relationships um, and uh, how to evolve it properly. Um, all right, folks, so we do need to continue with the subject matter today. Uh, very, very important to help get new users set up for the very first time. Uh, if you have more questions, please access the live chat after the show today. Or, or I mean, put them in the chat here on Zoom still. That's completely fine. Uh, Dan will do his best to answer as we go as well. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind, we also have four things you want to know after you set up TPX. Uh, we have upgrading from Top Producer AI Classic to Top Producer X and things like that. We do really appreciate the relationships feedback, though, because like I said, that is absolutely vital. I, I've been giving my own feedback on relationships actually to our, our product team as well, because uh, I do know that it can use some improvements. Uh, all right, folks, so what we're going to do is go down to the settings button in the bottom left corner, um, because there are some vital settings that you'd want to configure first in order to get the most out of TPX. Um, so right off the bat, we're on the My Information page here. And as mentioned near the beginning of the show, this is very much just your CRM's profile page. You can edit your information at any time by clicking Edit My Info at the bottom. Um, also, as mentioned earlier, this is primarily useful if you're a market snapshot subscriber. Uh, so top producer professional uh, bundle subscriber. Um, when you send out custom market reports, obviously you want those to represent you in the best way possible. And this is where you can modify that information, your logo, your headshot, all that kind of stuff, social media links. Um, you can even change the color theme at the bottom and then save my info. And if you are a market snapshot subscriber, guys, you want to see what that looks like. Just head over to the Market Snapshot tab. This is where you can modify the settings for Market Snapshot, by the way. If you are if you want to learn more, just click on that little question mark button there. We have a little walkthrough. But click on View Sample at the bottom, and that's going to bring you to a sample Market Snapshot uh, where you can see your color theme reflected there, your picture, your social media links if you scroll down to the bottom of the page. So that's a great way to just kind of jump back and forth and see how your changes look on here before you actually start setting out Market Snapshots. But don't worry, guys, if you make any changes after your reports are sent, uh, it's actually going to update in real time. So um, if we go down from my information to the next setting, uh, we do have calendar sync. Uh, so this is a really good option to integrate your third party calendar service with Top Producer X. So whether you're using a Google Calendar, a Microsoft Calendar, Apple iCloud Calendar, um, chances are you probably have that synchronized with your phone already. You probably have for years. Uh, I know my Google Calendar just 
is it just a part of everything on my phone at this point, right? And so for me, it would make the most sense to integrate my Google account into Producer X because that way I'm seamlessly integrating all the calendar appointments that I have been booking on my phone and everything with Top Producer. So that way they're going to synchronize automatically. If I add an appointment in Top Producer X, it's going to synchronize back to my Google calendar on my phone. And so you can do that, like I said, with Outlook, Google, Office 365, iCloud. Um, all you have to do is fill in your email address uh, in the area that would be here. Uh, if you haven't set it up yet, follow a couple steps, including selecting the correct calendar within your email account in case you have more than one. Uh, and then hitting start sync. Very important, guys. There will be a step two. You will have to hit start sync in order for that to begin. Um, after you do set this up, guys, um, it does take some time to start that initial sync process. You will have to give it, just to be safe, we say about 24 to 48 hours for that initial sync. Um, but any new appointments that you're adding on either side should synchronize over uh, pretty rapidly. Um, so guys, if you want to learn more about that, um, please feel free to reach out through the live chat. We can get you set up. But for most in most cases, it is pretty straightforward. You just enter your email address and follow the steps, give it any permissions that it needs. There might be a couple check checkboxes uh, to click on. And within no time, you'll have your calendar set up with Top Producer X. So guys, just a, one last reminder, uh, this will only work for your appointment tasks. So if you do want something to synchronize, it's really time sensitive, let's say, and you, you really can't miss out on that when you're on the go. Uh, set it as an appointment, your, your Google calendar, your iCloud calendar, whatever it is, is gonna notify you just as it would for any other calendar appointment. And you can kind of rely on that uh, when you're on the run. Um, question in the chat from uh, Judy about the color theme. Uh, yes, it does only apply to market snapshot. Um, that's what that specific setting is for. Um, if we go down, we're gonna skip down to email integration because this is a really big one. Uh, this is gonna let you use all the email features in TPX. Um, so while Calendar Sync was connecting to an email account, for the calendar functionality, email integration is specifically for sending email content. So regular emails, group emails to multiple people, uh, automated you know emails as part of drip campaigns and all that good stuff. And so this is going to come from your own email account. Uh, you can set up more than one if you need to. I do recommend just starting with your, your uh, primary email that you use for real estate. So all you have to do is enter your address in here, click authorize and follow a couple steps. And it's going to actually tailor some of the uh, uh, information to your email provider. So for example, if I put in a Yahoo account, it's going to realize that it's a Yahoo account. And it's going to say login with Yahoo Mail. And it's going to actually tell me that I need to create an app password and not my regular password. So then to learn more, just click on that link there. In this case, it's actually going to bring me to an article from Yahoo that I can use to learn about making an app password first, because that's just that's just a security requirement by Yahoo themselves, which we we obviously have to follow, right? And so this is going to be different for each email provider. Um, put in your email address, authorize, follow the necessary steps, and you should have your email account connected. Um, lots of support here for different email providers, guys. Uh, there's a big list you can choose from if it's not able to auto detect it, but in most cases it does. Um, yeah, so guys, this can unlock all the email capabilities, um, open tracking. You can see if people are opening your emails or not. Uh, like I said, every email that comes from your TPX is actually coming from your integrated account. You can even go into your send folder in your email account to see them all there. And so truly coming from you, really, really good deliverability. Um, and one quick thing I want to mention as well for existing users that have Market Snapshot, in case you weren't aware, there was a big update recently. Uh, your Market Snapshot reports actually now um, send from your integrated email account. So hugely improved deliverability. We've seen um, open rates spike up recently, um, really drastically. And so this is just such a huge advantage. There's there's no, you know, nothing you have to do on your side. As long as you have your email integration set up in TPX, like most people would, uh, you just automatically benefit from that update. So really, really great update there. Uh, Dan, I think we got a couple of questions. Anything you want to speak to uh, live or? Uh, yeah, so um, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, so for Judy, color theme, uh, you, you already answered that, Spencer, about the market snapshot only being available. I do want to add that we are looking uh, into allowing you for users to be able to set the background color of T TPX to a different color, like dark mode, um, because uh, we were thinking, why? Why do people want to change the theme, right? It's most likely from the feedback we're getting 
for the people that have been asking for it is to make it easier to see, right? Because not everybody has the same um, style, right? So that's one thing we're looking at. I don't know when it's going to come out, but that is something definitely we are aware of. So um, something to look forward to in the future. Um, another question here from Denise, our main goal for upgrading from our previous version 8i to this new version, Top Producer X, is that emails can only be sent to a certain number of contacts at a time. If we upgrade or start using X, uh, will it fix that issue? And my answer to that is that our previous version 8i had a limit of a thousand cent per day. The new version, um, it could be less or more. It does depend on who your email provider is for that email account that you link. Um, so for example, uh, for Gmail, from what I've seen last time, uh, their max is 2000%, uh, but it does depend on who your email provider is. So you might have to ask that email provider. Uh, the benefit to the new version is it's going to be more likely to go into their inbox and less likely to end up in their junk or spam folder compared to our previous version 8i. That was the biggest problem with our 8i email sending, our, our older version is that um, it's more likely to go into the spam because it's all being sent through a central server. So your reputation is being uh, affected by our other users that are that have more spammy behavior, right? So instead of having to deal with other people, you know, making it, um, ruining it for everybody, right? It's just connected to your own email account and the, the limit is depending on your email provider. Um, Right now, though, uh, when you're sending a group email through the new version, uh, per send, it, you can only do it in batches of 100, uh, but the limit is still whatever it is. So like it could be 2000 if it's Gmail, all right? Um, we do want to kind of start uh, encouraging people to, to be more selective when they're following up with Top Producer X. It's really not meant for mass marketing. Like we have um, smart targeting. Um, if you want to do mass marketing, like farming uh, to addresses, uh, which we can show you guys a little bit later and kind of show you a quick preview of what, what that smart targeting look like if you want to do mass marketing. But X is really about trying to nurture your relationship with each of your contacts. Um, we want to be able to give you more of a balance of the quality versus quantity instead of just casting a huge net and then that's kind of it, right? Uh, we, we don't want to, uh, we're not really focusing too much on the mass marketing part um, because we've seen the effectiveness of it and we want to make sure we are making good use of your time um, and that way you're more successful with our product. Yeah. Um, and, oh, sorry, Dan. I was just going to say, just to kind of leapfrog off that, you know, there, there's a ton you can do with effective use of contact types. That's why I really, really recommend that people join us for four things you want to know after you set up GPX, but but even the database management and organization 101, because you have to have your database organized in order to effectively market. Um, you know, if you have it narrowed down to specific groups, specific um, areas in the city, um, you know, you know, like say even first time home buyers, if you want to target them and try to, you know, really bring them on board, um, different, you know, levels of like, you know, you can grade your leads, A, B, C, D, that kind of thing, focus on the ones that mean the most. Uh, there, there's just tons of ways to do this via contact type. So you don't necessarily need to email 500 people at once. You could email a group of 50 really good prospects. You could email a group of 75, you know, pretty decent prospects. You could really narrow it down. Um, with use of contact types. And that's why we really, really, really advocate for uh, effective use of contact types from the get-go. Uh, Cause then you don't have to worry too much about that. You can just focus on the ones that matter the most and send them something that they're, they're really going to be interested in as opposed to hoping, you know, that some people are interested in it of 500 or whatever. Right. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say to that. Um, uh, Dan. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Judy has another question there. I answered it already in chat, but I just kind of want to explain it uh, because it's a little complicated. Um, can I sync to more than one email account? My office uses Outlook and I use Google for my personal email. So yes, Judy, you can sync to more than one email account for sending and receiving emails. So you can send it as your, your Outlook if you want, or you can send it as Google if you want in Top Producer X, depending on what you're doing. Um, you, when you sync all of those multiple email accounts, the nice thing about it is you'll see all your received emails for all those connected accounts that you put into the system. So you won't miss an email, right? And you don't have to log into multiple email programs. It's all going to be in your, in your TPX. Um, the 
only thing that you can't sync multiple times is if you're syncing for your contacts and you're syncing for your appointments. The reason for this is because we, we don't want to unintentionally create duplicate contacts or create dupl duplicate appointments, right? So you can only sync your contacts or your, your appointments, your calendar in, for one account. Uh, but for emails, you can sync multiple accounts. Hopefully that makes sense. I kind of give you guys an example in the chat um, for syncing calendar and contacts. Yeah, and so while Dan was talking there, I just showed off a really quick, easy demonstration. I, I pulled up past buyers from 2021 and 2022, and within seconds sent them a group email that I had a template for. You know, that's 32 contacts, but if this were real, um, those would be 32 contacts that know me, uh, that would hopefully respect me as their past realtor, and that you would hopefully listen if I were asking for uh, referrals or if I was asking for a testimonial or um, letting them know about some new properties that I think they might be interested in or, you know, investment, pro who, who knows, whatever the situation is. Um, but just a quick example of just, I literally did that in a matter of like, I think 30 seconds or something. Um, all right, folks. So continuing on with the show content, what we're going to do now after email integration is email signatures. Um, so email integration guys, actually one last thing on that. Just want to point out, you can integrate more than one email. Um, so, uh, I guess I did mention that, but um, just to kind of reiterate that if you do have more than one, you can integrate it here and that's going to let you toggle between the different email addresses when you're sending emails for TPX or viewing email history. Um, as Dan said, in terms of contact sync, calendar sync, that can only be one. Generally, you don't, you'd want to have all your stuff for that in one place anyway. Um, but in case you do have two email accounts that you send and receive from, that's different. You can definitely integrate more than one there. And that's exactly why uh, we let you do that there. Um, yeah. And then after setting up one or more email integration, you can set up a signature for it. Um, so for example, if I click on it here, as you can see, I can work on a signature. I can add images. I can resize them. I can change colors, hyperlinks, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you have a signature that's just an all-in-one like image, which I know is really popular nowadays, those ones are easy. You can just upload it directly from your computer, save your signature, you're good to go. Um, if you have it kind of in pieces where it's formatted very specifically, um, I would say try to copy and paste it over from your email account first. Um, if that doesn't work, um, it just could be a difference in, you know, what formatting TPX supports versus, you know, a really big name like Google, right? Um, and there may be ways to kind of get that in there. Um, I recommend first starting with the article and quick start video that we have if you cl click on the question mark button and then if you need some more one-on -one help sorry one-on-one -on -one help i should say setting up your signature the live chat is always a great option to walk you through that as well um so that's going to append itself onto any of your outbound emails from tpx and so basically if you make your signature here look let's say identical or very close to your actual signature no matter where you're sending emails from uh, it's, it's going to look consistent right so um, you can still send emails um, off your phone through a regular email inbox, by the way, guys, it's going to show up in TPX. It's just, if it's sent through TPX specifically, it's going to have that open tracking so you can see if people are opening them or not. Um, so then, yeah, it looks like Denise, Dan's got you an answer there. Um, so sending, yeah. So just to reiterate for, for anyone that might not be watching the chat, um, the, the limit at one, like in one send, like one action is, is a hundred in TPX. However, you can repeat that as many times as you need to in order to get the job done. Um, there's some very, very good reasons for that. As Dan mentioned, uh, we have to watch out for email limits. And also, uh, let me just put it this way. I, I have a test account that I've used for group email, um, an Outlook account actually. And it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's gotten suspended multiple times <laughs> just from demonstrating live. I, I've, I've had to unlock the account by getting a text message sent to my phone as verification just from demonstrating group email to you guys. Um, because sometimes I will go a little bit crazy with it when I'm demonstrating, right? So it, it just goes to show that, you know, if there weren't that 100 limit, your email account would be consistently getting in, in trouble, so to speak, right? And so if it's 100 at once, um, at least it kind of gives a little bit of break so that hopefully you don't get picked up by those filters or whatever kind of algorithm they use to, you know, kind of feel like you're using, uh, you're doing some kind of spammy behavior or that kind of thing. So you know, it's, it's there for a reason. It's using your email account. The, the advantages highly outweigh the disadvantages because that deliverability is there. It's coming directly from you. And like Dan said, it's not affected by anyone else's uh, usage or behavior of the, of the feature.
Yeah, for anyone looking for more of like a like a mass email program, um, maybe I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Maybe try like Mailchimp or something like that. Yeah, if you're wanting to send like to like ten thousand people or something like that, right? Yeah, um, Mailchimp, yeah, BombBomb. Bomb. I think Mailchimp's the most popular one, right? Exactly. So it's not like we endorse them. We're not partners with them or anything like that. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, if you want to do super huge numbers of contacts all at once, you might want to look into that. But like TPX. Uh, we want to make sure it's more selective um, so that it's you get you get the best bang for your buck. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you, you wouldn't want, you know, half your recipients to unsubscribe from email and TPX and then you can't send them anything mm -hmm. anymore as well. Right. Um, but in, in, in terms of MailChimp, though, that brings up a good point. You can actually integrate Top Producer ADI Classic with MailChimp. And then all you do is basically just hit a button and it sends your contacts of a specific group to MailChimp. And then you check your MailChimp account and your contacts are all there ready to send an email campaign to. So if anyone needs any help with that, like I said, we're, we don't, we're not related to MailChimp. We're not, we don't endorse them or anything like that, but we do have a uh, integration with them for, I think, quite some years now. Right. And, and so uh, that's a great option, a uh, great way to go as well. I'll, I'll post it in the chat if anyone's curious how to do it in Top Producer 8i. If you're a brand new user um it is in our older version so you might need a walkthrough from someone in on, in our chat support if you're really interested in how to do that but um you know from what we've seen um more more focused uh marketing is is better <laughs> yeah um guys we're going to jump down next to lead providers uh this is a big one for anyone that's paying for online leads or even if you just have uh like a website where uh, you know, you're advertising it, people go there, or they fill out a form and they send you a lead inquiry. Well, you can actually get those lead inquiries pushed to your top producer automatically so that it creates a contact record for you. So you don't have to type in people's information. They're just going to pop into the new status so that you can then follow up with them, maybe apply a, a campaign of some sort, and then move them over to engage and, and continue nurturing that lead, right? Um, also, you can set up the brand new lead auto response plans to help you with that process. So Let's say you're paying good money for leads from, you know, realtor.com or Zillow or bold leads or home light or something like that. Um, you know, obviously you want to get the most return on investment out of those kind of things. And so lead auto response plans, absolutely essential to help make sure that um, you convert as many leads as possible, that you get as much engagement uh, with those leads as possible right off the bat. And then, uh, you know, get, get a conversation going, right? Some people might just casually be browsing uh, around the internet, make an inquiry and then walk away from the computer. Who knows, right? And so these lead, or you might even be sleeping at the time, or you might be busy when they make that lead inquiry. So you can use the lead response plans to really kind of um, cover yourself there and convert more leads. Um, but before you do that, the first step is setting up your lead providers. Um, each top producer CRM has its own unique myleads.io address. Uh, this is just for lead, um, like lead parsing. So all you have to do is click on this copy button and then log into each of your lead providers and paste this address uh, into the settings for lead notification or lead forwarding. And so guys, we do have a walkthrough video of what that looks like here. Uh, I like to bring this up and just kind of show a quick example with a uh, sort of make-believe lead provider. So as you can see in this example here, um, you know, in the settings for this make-believe lead provider, we have our email. But then we also have this myleads.io address. So that way it still sends us an email like it probably always has, but it's also going to push that lead to top producer as well. So that we kind of get the best of both. We get that email and then we also get the contact in our top producer automatically. Um, so we do have support for well over 150 different lead providers. Um, if you need some help getting your individual lead sources set up, just feel free to click on the live chat in the bottom right corner. But usually there is... Um, like a setting on your side that you can access to just paste this in. Most lead providers do have it sort of self-serve like that, I find. Um, yeah. And then after you set up your lead providers, guys, feel free to head over to the marketing tab, head over to the task plan manager, and you can go ahead and start making a lead response plan. So um, Dan does have a blog article about the new automated lead response plan in there. Um, if anyone's interested, I guess, Dan, what do you say we could... Uh, show that live. We do we do have lots of recordings of us demonstrating that and the article as well. But if anyone watching right now is particularly interested in learning about setting up lead auto response, uh, text messages if you're in the U.S., uh, emails even if you're not, uh, call reminders to do's all that kind of stuff to really help 
uh, that initial lead inquiry, uh, you know, take off, right? Yeah, uh, I would say let's keep moving uh, because we do have just five minutes left and we have 14 attendees. So uh, we do definitely value you guys' time. I know you guys might have some appointments in about five minutes. So we'll do our best to finish up with the content here. You're more than welcome to stay and ask some final questions, of course. Uh, but just for those people that have to go, we just have a couple more slides to show you guys. And then uh, uh, you guys can go if you if you need to. Yeah, and like I said, guys, we have lots of content covering that already anyway. Feel free to check out our YouTube page um, or the article would be a great starting point that Dan posted in the chat there. Um, so guys, MLS credentials is a big one as well. Um, you can go here to connect one or more MLS boards. Um, so any boards that you're a member of, chances are we probably have support for it. Um, most we do. Just feel free to click add MLS credentials. Search for your board add in your MLS ID number that you would normally use to log into the board and save your credentials. Um, couple quick tips. If you can't find your board, try looking for kind of its you know larger vendor name, if you will, or kind of like a close by area. Like for example, uh, you know, if you're in the Vancouver area or in the islands, um, you know, Victoria board actually houses the Vancouver Island uh, feed as well, just as an example. Um, if you can't get your MLS ID to validate, please try it all capitalized. Um, and if that doesn't work, please try it all lowercase. It just depends. It's very specific. Uh, it's you know all about security at the end of the day. It's your MLS membership. We have to make sure that uh, it, it is you that is validating this. And But if you can't figure it out, just reach out through the live chat and we can help get that connected. We have all that information we can reference on our side. Give us a few minutes in the live chat. We'll, we would get you set up with that. Um, so after setting up one or more MLS boards, you can use... Uh, well, first off, Market Snapshot. If you're a Market Snapshot subscriber, you do have to do this first. Um, even if you don't have Market Snapshot, you can use things like Property Insights uh, to track your home buyers' inquiries, uh, transactions. Um, so if you guys want to learn more about that, just let us know in the chat. We can get you a link. Um, team management. Uh, very briefly, this is just for any team leaders or brokers that are watching. Um, you know, if you subscribe to Top Producer, you have more than one license because uh, you want to get your whole team involved, you can come here to make users for each of your agents. So uh, if anyone want, wants to learn more, uh, we do have a dedicated article for that that Dan can link to as well. Um, so yeah, this this only pertains to team teams, you know, brand new teams that need to make their logins for the very first time. If you're an existing user and you're making your way over to TPX, you don't really have to worry about this. Likely you already have your team created in Top Producer 8i and you would just see them all here automatically. Um, if you do need to add more users to your team, though, you don't have any available licenses, just let us know in the chat. We can get someone to reach out to you regarding uh, pricing and how to get that done and, and you know, get your whole team in there. Um, and texting. Texting is an option that's available in the U.S. currently, only available to U.S. customers at this time. Uh, there's some legal, you know, challenges regarding that and technical challenges regarding that. So, But if you're in the U.S., please feel free to take full advantage of excuse me, getting your very own Top Producer X texting number. Um, you just fill in your regular phone number without any spaces or anything. Click Save Texting Setup. You're going to get a, a text message on your phone. Just reply with the word confirm uh, and then refresh this page. You should be given a Top Producer X texting number. Uh, it's going to be in the same area code as your actual number, and it's going to allow you to send messages right out of TPX. Um, if someone texts you back, you're going to get a notification through a text message letting you know that they did. And then you can go to the record and follow up. And this is also used for the lead auto response plans. So if you want to take advantage of that automated texting, get a text message right out to those new leads right away and all that kind of good stuff, you do have to set this up first. And if someone calls, uh, and Alexa, so just to answer your question on the fly here, no way to use your regular number, but you do get in the same area code. And if anyone calls that virtual number, don't worry, it's, it's going to route it directly to your phone. You won't miss out on any phone calls or anything like that. Um, there's there's no way to copy a number like that, at least legally. <laughs> uh, we don't want to venture into any kind of like legal stuff, obviously. Um, and But the next best thing is you do get that virtual texting number in the same area code. Um, yeah, you can treat it as a business number. Feel free to advertise it. Put it on your email signature. Put it on your business cards, your website. Um, and it, it, as an added benefit, if you will, you kind of have that separation. You don't have to advertise your real number for the whole internet to see. Um, so 
uh, Alexis, highly recommend you still give it a shot. We have heard that feedback before. Um, but j- just to be honest, there's still tons of benefit to it. Um, lead auto response, you can treat it as your business number. Like I said, if you need to introduce it to existing clients, just, just put together a really quick email or excuse me, texting template that you can send to them and be like, Hey, so-and-so it's Alexis realtor. Um, just a heads up. This is just my, my CRM texting number or my business texting number. Feel free to add it to your phone and they'll never think about it ever again, to be honest. Uh, I don't remember anyone's number really, except for my mom's, right? So <laughs> people people don't usually care what number you're calling or texting them from. As long as they save it in their phone, they're good to go. Um, and like I said, lead order response, especially if you're paying for leads, highly recommend that as well. Um, Denise was asking, can you review how to add your MLS uh, number for MLS credentials? Um, yeah, so Denise, we just go to add MLS credentials here and then search for your board. So let's say for example, we're with Bright MLS. We just click on it and then enter whatever your ID is here and then save your credentials. Um, like I said, if that doesn't validate, try to make sure everything's capitalized. That's a, that's a letter or try it the other way um, or just remove any little first bit of the it and just try the bulk of your code like that. And like I said, Denise, if that doesn't work, feel free to reach out to the live chat in the bottom right corner. Um, just let us know, you know, your name, your top producer username, that kind of thing. And we can get that looked into for you. Um, so guys, that kind of covers the bulk of the settings for TPX. We are kind of out of time. Um, in terms of importing contacts though, um, I do want to briefly let you know that there is two main ways to get your contacts into top producer. Uh, one is through importing a spreadsheet. You just go to import contacts. There are some recommended sort of like prerequisites, if you will, some recommended things that you should do to make sure your spreadsheet is laid out properly. Coming from a different CRM or something, usually it's just fine in most cases. Um, So first stop, guys, click on that question mark button. You're going to be brought to a quick start video of how to import contacts. It's not very long, doesn't take up a lot of time. It's only three minutes, 21 seconds, and it's going to show you uh, some of the essentials of getting started with that, how to upload that from your computer, how to go through the field mappings some tips and tricks, things to watch out for along the way, importing contacts. And if you need any help, because like I said, everyone's contact situation is different, right? You can access the live chat in the bottom right corner. Um, Another way is through our contact sync feature, which is connecting to an email account, pulling in those contacts from your Google account, uh, iCloud account, or, um, you know, Microsoft account automatically. Um, This is a great way for a new agent to get started. If you don't have a database yet, just pull in your contacts from your email, which are probably uh, connected to your phone anyway, and then just keep that up to date automatically. Um, This is a great way to supplement your database uh, as well with more contacts or to kind of flesh out their information a little bit more from what you have in your email account. Um, If you want to import a spreadsheet, but you also feel like you want to use contact sync though, please, please, please hold off on setting up contact sync until after you've imported your spreadsheet. That is the absolute safest way to go because most people have crossover between the two, the, you know, the people in the spreadsheet, the people in your email account. Setting up contact sync after is actually going to recognize those duplicate contacts and merge them into, into one sort of the best of both worlds kind of uh, version of that contact. So yeah, how do you recommend you go that route? Um, Judy was saying, I probably won't be using texting number either. That means my clients have decided to remember TPX number. Um, I mean, it's ultimately it's up to you, Judy. Um, I would say give it a try for maybe new leads first. They're not really going to care where you text them from because they don't know you yet. And then as you get more comfortable with that, you might want to sort of introduce that where you feel like it's appropriate, right? Uh, you don't have to use it for everyone, um, but the advantage is that it's logged in your top producer X no matter what. You can always see the history of the text messages there. And you can type it on your keyboard if you're doing some work and then move on to the next person. Uh, Really easy to do some follow-ups and prospecting even for for the right people. And like I said, texting templates uh, make that a whole lot simpler as well. Yeah, and and personally, like when I get a text from a business or my realtor, I don't really care what number. Like if he has 10 numbers, I don't care. As long as like he tells me it's me, it's him, I'll just save it under his name. So the next time he texts me, it just shows my name. I'm a yeah, and that's my realtor's name. I don't know his number, but I know his name. <laughs> it, it, exactly, and I believe me, we we, we do understand the concern. Uh, understand where you're coming from, from sure. But you know, we've gone also another set of feedback that where people definitely agree and say, you know what? Actually, now that you phrase it that way, it's not a big deal. 
Uh, most people just wouldn't really care. And in, in this day and age, it, it's all just contacts and a phone anyway, right? No one, like Dan said, pays attention to numbers. Um, all right, folks. So that's all we have time for in terms of the settings. Um, we are over time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them our way. But uh, before we do wrap up, I do want to talk to you about the follow-up coach, um, especially for our new users watching. Uh, this is a great way to clean up your database. So even if we are over time, I, I just don't want to let you go without showing you this, even if just for a moment here, uh, five contacts a day is a great baseline. You can use it for more, you can use it for less, and it's going to help you, uh, you know, focus on something, do some cleanup, do some prospecting, and it's really going to give you a little bit of guidance day in and day out for your database. And so guys, all you have to do to get started with the follow-up coach is first off, obviously import some contacts, add some contacts. The very next day after adding some new contacts, um, it, they're going to show up in the follow-up coach. And so it looks at their status, new, engaged, future, active, closed. Just another reason to keep your statuses as accurate as possible for your contacts. It's going to look at the last touch for the contact and a couple of other variables. Um, and then you can just click on them and follow the suggestions if you want. But more than anything, just use it as an opportunity to focus on this person or their contact record or, you know, a combination of both. So past client, maybe it's, um, you know, they're, they're good, but we haven't sent them a market snapshot yet. It's going to remind us so we can go ahead, send them a report, maybe give them a call, touch base, say hi, done, move on to the next person. So guys, you can really use this as a way to focus on five, 10, 15, however many you want. Even if you just did five a day, that would be 25 contacts in a week, followed up, cleaned up with, you know, provided that little bit of extra service that would add up to about 1500 a year if you did that consistently. And so that's a great way to decide what your next move is if you're not sure, or just get a little bit of extra work done, be a little bit extra productive in your database. Highly recommend that guys. Um, let's see. Anything you want to speak to there, Dan, really quick before we cap off for today? Um, no, I think uh, we can just um, continue answering some questions. Um, we've got some uh, some housekeeping items in here, um, but if you have to go, uh, thank you guys for, for joining us, but I'll, I'll let you go ahead and finish this up, Spencer. Sure. Um, so Jordan said, when contacts are linked together, will the notes tied to that contact appear in both contacts? Same, same as if we were to unmerge the contacts in the event of a divorce or something. Uh, so Jordan, the, the notes are only on one contact or another. So that way, that, that's why I really recommend using one contact as your primary contact, right? And then sending all the other relationship contacts to maybe inactive or non-client so that you know, you're know you not trying to figure out which one to, to add everything on, right? I would say the first point of contact, the one that you end up speaking to the most, uh, maybe it's the wife in one case, maybe it's the husband in another case or, or whatever, right? Um, try to keep it all in one record, have that relationship there so you can reference it. If there's something that absolutely only pertains to the other person, then, you know, obviously feel free to add that as a note on their record instead, but highly recommended that you keep it as much as possible on one record. Um, and then, yeah, if you need to unlink a record, that's very, very easy or even change the relationship. I can maybe not use Brandon as an example, but, <laughs> um, like for example, I can go to relationships. And then I can just simply switch this. Uh, let me move this in case it's cut off on Zoom here. I can just click on the edit icon and just say, this is now an X partner instead. And then save that relationship. And just as easy as that. Now I always know, right? And then now I, I have th everything separate anyway. Yeah, you guys are bringing up some really good points and they're very fair, right? It would be nice to have it like automatically put it into both contact records, right? But right now it doesn't, right? Um, this is like any kind of software where, you know, our first iteration uh, is making sure we we do the fundamentals really good, like the basic really good. Mm -hmm. um, but that is something that, yes, I agree that it would be nice that it's automatic. So, you that you know, you, you add a note, you can link it to both. And then when they separate, it automatically separates or something like that, right? Uh, yeah. But for now, yeah, you're going to have to decide whether you want to go through the the, um, the work of copy pasting the same note into both or like Spencer suggested, um, just deciding on one of them for now because, you know, they are in a relationship. But if they, you know, for whatever reason, break the relationship, 
you can just review that person's notes and select only the ones that's pertaining to that separate contact record, right? Because you might have other notes that doesn't pertain to them anymore. So you not you might not necessarily want all their notes anyways. So just just something to kind of keep the dialogue going here. Yeah, and, and exactly as Dan said, as we kind of alluded to earlier, is that this is an evolving feature. This is great feedback because, yeah, I do agree there should be an option. A Angelina, 100%, I, I totally understand. Um, both the spouses are buying together, you know, um, that kind of goes without saying. But yeah, just for now, at least in this first iteration of relationships, I would recommend uh, keeping sort of a primary contact and then have everyone a second, because that's kind of how it worked in Top Producer X before anyway. You kind of had them on one record and one person, no matter what, always was the primary anyway, right? Um, yeah. So now it's just a little bit separate. Um, if you really wanted to, what you could do is, you know, in relationships, let's say I want Kevin to be included in a note. I could actually just go to uh, notes. And then as I'm adding a note, I can just add his name in there as well. And then now that pertains to both the records. It's going to actually save on both. See if I go like this test. So that's in Kevin's, uh, or sorry, Katie's. If I go to Kevin, that's also in his notes section as well. So that's one way you could do that just for now. Uh, that does work perfectly fine. Yeah, and um, you know, Anthony's making some really good feedback. Um, mm. This is one of the things that you know. This is why she continues to aid AI, and AI is not going away. So if you want to keep using both, that's totally fine too. Um, but at the same time, um, we have people that are giving us feedback that is the opposite of what another user is saying, right? So we want to make sure we find the right balance for both, for everybody use, that uses Top Producer. And that is one of the things that we've learned is that uh, being able to have a separate contact outweighs, you know, having them in one contact record, at least at the moment, right? I'm not saying that I agree with that forever. Um, I, actually, uh, I actually think that it should be both. Uh, but right now, uh, the way we've implemented it is they're separate contacts, but hopefully in the future, um, hopefully that will, uh, uh, but uh, again, I don't want that to be a, a deal breaker, Angelina. I think there's a lot of really good features in Top Producer X that you're going to be happy with. Um, you, so you, I, I would recommend you to start using bit by bit your Top Producer X because you also don't want to be left behind, right? Let's say a year later then that we implement that feature that you like. But then that's a year's worth of features that you now have to scramble to learn and kind of catch up with competition that are using TPX from the start, right? So just kind of food for thought there. So Denise, I, I'm just going to be honest and blunt here. I, I ha really have a hard time understanding how email integration with your own existing email account and, and all that kind of good stuff doesn't apply to your business. Um, maybe we weren't able to demonstrate it thoroughly enough in a getting started show but please join us for our four things after setup show because i think you can really see the benefit if you see it in action um that's something that just makes sense in 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 2022 um you know google microsoft outlook you know um icloud everyone's using that kind of stuff it just makes sense to integrate the stuff that you're already using every single day on your on your smartphone with tpx and kind of just seamlessly letting it be a part of that and so, like I said, please, I, I do really hope that you join us for the follow-up show because uh, we'd love to be able to show you more. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a little confusing now, um, please uh, maybe take uh, a bit of a moment to take take pause mm -hmm. and maybe uh, chat with us, um, you know, a few minutes or from today or something like that. So we mm -hmm. can kind of understand a little bit more of your situation better and give you some more specific questions. Because the way we're answering these questions, it applies to not just... 8 users, but also brand new customers, right? We wanna make sure that everyone has the, uh, the uh, optimized answer for the most situations that yeah. we can Yeah, exactly. We do have a, quite a good number of live chat reps available in the, in the live chat there that could speak to each of your individual situations. As Dan said, it's, it's nearly impossible for us to kind of, uh, you know, we, we could answer one person one way, but then it doesn't make sense to another person or doesn't pertain to them. And, and that kind of thing, right? So that's exactly what the live chat is there for. You can connect with the rep one-on-one -on -one, um, and they can look into that further with you, um, get you the answers you need, get you some help and kind of break that down a little bit more as well. Um, yeah, I guess I can't really say any more, or I guess I, yeah, I can't really say anything more that Dan hasn't said already. Dan kind of made some good points and gave some good answers to uh, some of the recent messages there. Yeah, um, we got a new 
question here from Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to type in a contacts name in the transaction tab? Uh, like when adding a note so that multiple contacts can be linked to a transaction, say if husband and wife or friends are purchasing a house together. So that's a really good question. So if we yep. can show them a transaction record and we'll show you how to add transaction parties in there. And this is one of the benefits to having separate contacts is you can track all the different parties um, in, in that contact record. So let's say, for example, John here, um, it, his, uh, let's say Janet Daniels is his spouse, right? Just as an example. So they're perfect. I've Janet added. So what I can do is go back to his transaction record here. And then to, let me just move this in case Zoom is blocking it. Um, add party. And then Janet Daniels. And then click on it and just say they are also the primary buyer. And then save party. See, then just like that, I have both of them there as a transaction party. And you can um, add any anyone. So if you click on add party again, for example, um, you know, it, if you click on transaction role for me, um, Spencer, on that one, add party and then transaction role drop. Oh, down. yeah, sorry. Yeah. So like if it's a tenant, right, you can like you can put in whoever that you want or inspector, right? If you really want to make sure whatever for whatever reason you add them as a transaction party, that one's probably not as realistic. But like uh, tenant, that's probably a, a good transaction party in there, um, right? Uh, or estate or executor or whatever, right? If you're dealing with an estate sale or something like that. Yeah, you can kind of do anything that you want with that there. Add as many par uh, transaction parties as you need to that you need to keep track of. Um, you know, and then on the flip side of things, there's some people that you wouldn't want to add here automatically, right? Like there'd be no reason to have uh, a couple's, you know, five-year-old child in here <laughs> yeah. or, or something like that. Right. Cause they're, they're not a, <laughs> they're, they're not a part of the transaction process beyond moving in with uh, the parents. Right. So, um, yeah, so hope that helps. Um, yeah. Um, and just remember, you can also go in through the contact record. So if I have my active tab, or maybe I have a custom tab of all my buyers, uh, under contract or something like that, that I'm keeping a close eye on to try to, you know, transact with them as soon as possible. Um, I can even go in that way as well. So here's my brand new buyers under contract tab. Here's all my buyers that are tagged like that. I go to John here and then I can go to transactions or let me find one that actually does have a transaction. So <laughs> this is just very much a test database. So unfortunately not everything is set up like realist, there we go. So let's say Brandon is a buyer in her contract. I can just go to the transactions tab and then click on his transaction there. And that just also takes me right to his record. So that's might be an easier workflow for you sometimes. Uh, another question in chat, would there be phone support again? Uh, and my answer to that is we still have phone support, but we do use chat support as a way to triage. Uh, that way we can take care of as many customers as we can right away. Our, our response time is less than a minute right now. So for some simple questions, we can we can help you out through chat right away, right? But, um, you know, if that chat, you know, kind of gets complicated, uh, something like that, where, you know, we need to give you a call, uh, we will give you a call. So that's, um, you know, phone support, although it's not available uh, right away, uh, as far as your, your initial question, you have to go through chat support first. Uh, we do still call people in case we, it, it, it does get um, more complex um, that is not, um, you know, effective to do in chat. Uh, if you are needing phone support for helping you get your top producer X set up um, or, or anything like that, um, we do have some onboarding options that are available. They are paid. Uh, but that kind of helps you uh, like give it a little boost as far as getting your top producer X set up if you want us to kind of give you some more white glove service uh, through phone. Uh, so that is available as well. Uh, I don't know if Spencer, if you want to show that um, onboarding um, landing page just to see what, just to show people uh, what those uh, paid options uh, will, will give them if sure. they need a little extra help with uh, their TPX getting started. Yeah, and just, just really quick though, Dan, before that, you know, just, just to reiterate, you know, Judy and other customers that were kind of wondering about phone support, 
you know, like Dan said, um, you know, please, please give the live chat a chance first. And because if that rep can't help you directly, maybe it's something outside their control or outside of their their knowledge or their area of expertise or, or whatever it is, they, they can always look into getting that escalated for you if needed. Um, think of them as if they can't help you directly, they can at least triage that. But but we just please ask that you give them the chance. If, if you just drop out of the chat and leave randomly, we, we can't do a whole lot with that either, right? So just, just being honest, we would need to gather some information and then that information can either be used directly to help you or passed along to the to the better like team for that or that kind of thing, right? So we just ask that you do work with us a little bit as well. Give us a chance to help or to triage that in the right direction at least. Um, but that being said, um, in terms of brand new users that are watching, um, as Dan was saying, we do have onboarding or even if you're not a new user, but you just wanna make sure that you are uh, set up the best that you can and get some additional coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we do have the paid options as well. Um, but yeah, like Dan said, phone support still exists. Um, it's just our frontline support is is live chat. So if you go there, like I said, we'll we'll try to get you the help you need. But we just also ask for the opportunity to make that happen. Um, but yeah, in terms of the onboarding options, we have our premium setup package uh, comes in at one hundred fifty dollars uh, USD, or sorry, one hundred forty nine dollars, and then the concierge setup, which is two hundred ninety nine. You get a ton of different perks. Uh, you get a uh, couple different uh, sessions uh, with a customer success specialist. And you can also do that over Zoom and all that good stuff to really make sure that you guys are making the most of the time uh, for the setup and coaching that you need. So like I said, primarily aimed at brand new users that are just getting started for the very first time. But uh, of course, nothing stops you from adding it on if you're existing user as well. Um, yeah, so if like you really, if you really need someone to clean up your duplicates for you or at least get you started with that, um, that concierge one um, includes duplicate cleanup. Yeah. And like I said, th this is just an option. Uh, but like I said, live chat, free, unlimited support. And like I said, we're definitely going to follow up with you um, if you need some extra help on an issue, right? We're, we're not going to leave you high and dry. Like <laughs> just, just reach out through the live chat first. And like I said, please give us the opportunity to um, do our best to investigate that and treat us that as, as, uh, as appropriate. Um, so that being said, guys, we do have to finish off for today. We are quite a bit over time. I do really appreciate the questions and stuff like that. But uh, for any ADI users that are watching that want to learn more, please make sure to join us for uh, upgrading from Top Producer ADI Classic to X. Uh, I, Dan may have linked to that in the chat already, but just in case, I'm sure we can get that in the chat again for you um, because we do have the latest recording from last month and we do have another airing of that coming up on the 25th because we do do that show once a month. And so that is the go-to show for all of your upgrading questions, concerns, and highlighting new features and the benefits and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I just do hope that we didn't take too much away today from brand new users that we're trying to get set up for the first time. Um, if you feel like there was some stones left unturned and you're a brand new user, you can always reference back to the previous recording of Getting Started with TPX as well. Um, or just go to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash top producer software. And, uh, and then the onboarding packages are a great option as well if you need some extra help. Uh, all right, folks. Well, first, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been definitely an action-packed show. Uh, thank you for all your questions and comments. Um, I know not every answer that you're getting is, is necessarily what you want to hear, but we are just going to be open and honest with you, um, you know, in terms of the questions about 8i to X and stuff like that. Doing our best to accommodate those questions, even though they're kind of outside the scope of this particular show. Um, but just reach out to the live chat. We can get you some more help with that. Uh, I guarantee you, you know, we're going to do our best to help you out. Just, just push for it. Let us know what the, um, the end result you're looking for is, and we'll try to get you there. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining in today. This means Spencer with top producers, customer success team, uh, joined by Dan, uh, from our customer care team. And we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to join us for four things you want to know after setting up TPX Thursdays. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we're going to go through a lot more examples and walkthroughs and showing you some tips and tricks and, and different features and stuff like that um, uh, as a follow-up to the show. Um, anything you'd like to add there, Dan? Uh, no, I... Um, one second here, Jude. I have tried the chat for email issues and TV support. So we messed up my email. Now I don't know if anyone is getting emails. I send out of X. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, that you're having issues, Judy. Um, uh, please definitely 
hit the chat button because we want to make sure your email is working. Um, it should be working. I'm I, I'm not getting any like like um, multiple reports of like just our TPX email not working. So um, some something very specific into your account we need to look into. So I'm sorry for um, having te technical issues in your account, Judy, but please reach out on chat and we'll get you sorted out. But otherwise, um, for everybody else, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for all your chats, Judy, Jordan, um, Alexis. Thank you for all of your feedback. We love it. Uh, we're going to make sure we add, we, we, we're always, me and Spencer, we're, we're very customer advocate focused. Um, this is why we are very open and honest with you guys in these webinars. And we take that uh, to our product team to advocate on your behalf. So thank you guys so much. And hopefully we'll see you guys in another webinar soon. Exactly, guys. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, take care. We'll see you soon. I uh, hope to see you on Thursday. Uh, but until then, have a great rest of your week. Thank you very much.